doing just portraits for a year got me thinking only about portraits for an entire year and everything I learned from that has carried over into what I do now. So it kind of, in a weird way, when you just look at the long haul of doing photography for 12 or 13 years or however long I'm doing it, and I think about it in different things I want to learn and I'm interested in a certain aspect of photography, so I go pursue it super in depth for like a year or however long. And it, you know, five, 10 years later, it makes you kind of really well-rounded to do that. Welcome to High Level. My name is Axel, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing my good friend, Will Malone. Will, thank you so much for being on the show today. Absolutely. Uh, Will and I met about six or seven years ago when I used to live in Chattanooga. And we actually met because we were both doing YouTube. I was doing my little vlog and he was doing a daily vlog. And since we met, I've always been impressed with your tenacity and the way that you are able to stick to daily projects. Because you were at that time, you were doing a picture a day and then you started doing a vlog every day. How in the world do you, first of all, get the idea and then commit to doing this for an entire year? It, it's funny that you bring this up today because I actually posted an Instagram story about this very problem, which is uh, it's it's fun and I like to stay busy. And usually like January tends to be my slowest time just business wise and whatever, just for a lot of people, January slow. And so of course, January ends up being the time I'm like, well, I need to fill my time. Let me come up with some new project. And then it ends up being uh this thing that I have to deal with all year long, even when I'm super busy. Um, but I don't know. I just, I like doing it. It's good practice. It keeps me, keeps me sharp. It keeps me kind of evolving. Um, and so I'm doing one now that uh, is, I, I've shot, I've done like nine or so daily projects of some kind. And I'm, I'm doing a new one this year, but weirdly this one's my hardest because the way I take photos now is more for like, and we can talk more about this, but like a, a print and fine art sort of thing. And so I'm trying to create a, uh, a good photo, not just like a document of my day. And it takes a ton of time to do that every single day. <laughs> and I, I did not quite understand what I was uh, about to get into when I started this. <laughs> Is that something that you think anyone getting started with photography or video should go and try to do that? Or is that something that is more like an advanced thing after you have been doing it for a while, now you need to challenge yourself and that's how you're doing that? No, I mean, that's how I started. So I did my first ever daily photo project in 2011 and I had been doing photography for maybe two years at that point. And it wasn't like, I look back at it and I'm like, oh man, these photos are terrible. But like, it, it was, I learned a lot. I got a lot of people, it got a lot of people excited to like follow along too. So it kind of started to like grow a community and get people to know, like see what I was doing. Um, so I think, I honestly think if you want to get good at something or want to make it your job or whatever, I think you need to do a little bit every day. Cause that's just, I don't know. I mean, if you want to be competitive, uh, let me put it this way. There's so many good photographers out there, like a, a ridiculous amount. There's great videographers out there and there's so much and you can go on the internet and see amazing artists after amazing artists. I mean, in my mind to stay competitive, I just need to just be like going, going, going all the time. And I think it's just a good motivator. And especially if you're working a job that you don't love, like I, back then I was like working at coffee shops, bookstores, you know, uh, I was a pool boy um, doing jobs I didn't love. It gave me something to look forward to at the end of the day where I could like work towards the thing that I wanted to eventually do. So I recommend it to beginners or even people who are veterans, you know? Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And I totally agree with that. For me, I, I remember people saying when I first got started with photography and all that, people would say, no, just go out and shoot or, uh, you find people that say, oh, let's just go out like on a photo trip and let's just shoot things. And for me, I've always been creative and I always have an abundance of ideas, but I never felt like that would be something that I would enjoy. Like for me, I need purpose. 
And I, I love that with your project. It's like, you know that you have to practice and you have to create, but now you're making it a thing. You're making it a project. You're making it something that you're committing to people that, hey, you're, I'm going to be shooting these pictures every day, or I'm going to be doing these videos every day. And then you have to show up and you have to force yourself to make something. But at the same time, it's part of a bigger thing. At, at least for me personally, that that makes me like pay attention. And I think I would stick to something like that instead of just just be creative just for the sake of being creative. Because I feel like creativity with constraints is actually more effective than just free range creativity when it's kind of aimless at least in, in my opinion. So that's how you and I met. And ev everything was a little bit different in social media. Uh, it was kind of the beginning of all these vlogs and all of that. And how do you feel that things have changed from back then when, when we first started doing these kind of things to now, four or five years later, when everything has matured more, now you have you're in a completely different space. You do this full time, you have a business. How do you see that happening now? Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know, since then, that was what, 2016? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't even think I can make, uh, I don't even know how I would even tackle a list of all the things that have changed. Uh, you know, I mean, I, back then, you know, you mentioned I was doing a daily vlog. Like, I look back at those videos and they're terrible. Like, it's like, I, and, and, but it taught me how to edit video. So now when I have to do video stuff, I know the basics. I'm not like a, I'm not a videographer like you by any chance, but I can, I can, I know my way around video editing software so I can make videos for myself and sometimes other people here and there. But, um, it just kind of, it made me focus on a different type of camera use than photography. So um, so I don't know. I, I see that like, I've tried all this stuff and used daily photo projects and other photo projects as a way to get good at some aspect of something I was interested in. Like I did one where I just did portraits for a year and doing just portraits for a year got me thinking only about portraits for an entire year. And everything I learned from that has carried over into what I do now. So it kind of, in a weird way, when you just look at the long haul of, you know, doing photography for 12 or 13 years or however long I'm doing it. And I think about it in different things I want to learn. And I'm, I'm interested in a certain aspect of photography. So I go pursue it super in depth for like a year or however long. And it, it by, you know, five, 10 years later, it makes you kind of really well-rounded to do that. So I don't know if I answer your question, but I would say that a lot everything I'm doing now is uh, is a result of all the pieces of the past few years, basically. That's very interesting. And right now, uh, I've seen the, the last few months, you have been working a lot with different cities and doing kind of like urban landscape, I guess I, I would call it. Uh, tell me a little bit about that project and like the things that you're working on right now. Yeah, so uh, during... Uh, the, when the pandemic started, um, well, actually before that, so back in like 2017, 2018, uh, I would um, visit. So I, I used to, in the summers between college, I'd go to this town called Thomasville, Georgia, and, and it's just, I had family there. And so I would, during the summers, go stay there and work and whatever. And I would walk around my camera and take pictures, whether it was film or whatever. And I would just use it to experiment. You know, I had a job, I worked at a bookstore and then on my lunch break, I'd walk around with my camera afterward. And so I was just dreaming up like what photos could I take? And I remember having the thought that it would be cool if, you know, I could find other towns like Thomasville and build an image library of images that, you know, not many people have taken. And so at the time, like, you just didn't see that much, like, good photography of Thomasville. So I had this one shot called, it was like the picture of the water tower. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, it was a picture of a water tower, and uh, I did a double exposure on the brick on the road. And so it kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know if I can link to it or something, but <laughs> it's kind of weird to describe. But uh, it, uh, it basically kind of, it, it, it kind of put together the essential aspects of Thomasville and so it's like a just a good s summation of that town and 
So I remember uh, I started selling it. So like I ha- I sold like a big 60 inch by 40 inch metal print of it to like a bank conference room. And I started wow. thinking, I was like, what about like other places that don't have good photography and maybe there's businesses that would love to hang local stuff in their business. And so I had that idea a long time ago. Then the pandemic happened and I just decided I was like, uh, I was kind of shooting some weddings at the time, just different freelance stuff. And I was like, you know what? Like, I just figured I was like, at the time I was like, well, weddings are over, <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. so I was like, why don't I just get in my truck and start doing more architectural photography in that kind of lane? So throughout the whole pandemic, I basically drove around in my truck um, and went to different small towns, kind of like Thomasville. And I currently live in one and just make relationships and spent the whole pandemic just shooting a ridiculous amount of photos and so then i started doing a pop-up shop selling prints uh stationery all kinds of stuff and so i'll do it commercially uh retail on my website so it's kind of turned into this weird thing and this year it's growing in a whole other way but basically it's it's a way to see photography is not just about you know i think a lot of people when they hear i'm a photographer they ask if I shoot weddings, you know, cause that's what a lot of photographers do. And this is kind of a weird lane that I carved out just from maybe the daily photo projects kind of added up to this. Cause I'm using some of the same tactics. So it's, I call it the small town photo project because I'm going to small towns that are growing. You know, there's a lot of small, not so, <laughs> so like towns with growth, you know, there's not, but there's some that are really popular but there's not a big photography community community taking photos of that town. So I'm kind of trying to fill that niche in a way. And so far it's, it's working and it's um, been pretty interesting. That's so cool, man. And I was so happy. Like every time I see your pictures, I always like them and I'm, I'm so happy that you turn th- this time where we couldn't shoot anything. Basically it, made you like think outside of the box and then mix things that you like with the reality of okay people are not going to hire you to do events or do real estate or do that many portraits and then you turn that around and you go do something that you like mix with the business side of it which i think is super interesting and you also went through the transition of being like a, a hobbyist then kind of a freelancer and then you went on full time Could you talk a little bit about that transition and what are some key things that you learned throughout the way? So like for someone who might be watching, if they're thinking about going in full time into photography, what are some things that they need to nail down? (laughs) Well, uh, yeah, mine's like super long, like the, the year span from hobbyist to now. Um, like I started in 2009, uh, in high school and kind of, like always wanted to do it, but I didn't know how that was possible. So basically what I did is a lot of stuff that showed me what I really didn't want to end up doing. Um, like I just, anything that let me use a camera, I would just kind of say yes to, um, whether that's like school photography, I did school photography for a little bit, uh, which I don't recommend, but it will give you appreciation for, which I don't recommend. <laughs> That's yeah. the caveat. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend doing that. But if you really want to know like what photography looks like with uh, all the creativity sucked out of it, that's <laughs> school. Yeah, school listen, school photography. It has to exist. But the the big companies that do that, it's it's not super fun to work for if you want to enjoy photography as a living. Um, and so you know, I just did. I don't, I just experimented. I just tried a lot of stuff. And I think ultimately getting from hobbyist to freelancer to whatever, isn't really a set path. It's more just like, you've got to try a lot of stuff. You've got to experiment. You've got to be patient because eventually all of the pieces of all the stuff you've done over the years will fit together in a way that will finally make sense. And for me, it just, it took a long time. It's, it's just taken forever to kind of finally figure out like where I fit. And it ends up somehow being more in uh, for the small town photo project, like architectural, which it's funny. I, I talk to like new clients and new business and stuff. And they're like, so you're an architectural photographer. And I'm just thinking like, 
I've never really thought of myself in that lane because I was always doing like portraits and different kinds of stuff. But like, that's kind of where it's all brought me. So you just have to do a lot of stuff. And, mm -hmm. just... but then you almost have to find, you have to do a lot of stuff, but then try to find one lane and kind of own that. Right. In order yeah. to, I guess, in order to grow as a business. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, and I think if you're patient, that lane will kind of present itself because you'll, you'll, without realizing it, you've created a style or you have uh, a bunch of interests that you've picked up along the way. And then you'll kind of hone down to what that lane is. And I think last time I saw you in person, I think I was like still in some of that muck where I was like trying to figure it out. And, you know, I hung out with you, you know, and we, and, and, you know, did all kind of, and like, I've met up with all kinds of people that, don't really relate to what I'm doing now, but I just ask questions, talk to people who are passionate about what they're doing. And eventually you kind of hone in on what you should be doing. And I think just being curious and looking for it, um, it may take a while. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. For me personally, that would be really difficult because I guess I'm such a, like I said before, I, I like to have like a purpose or like a thing that I'm aiming for. Uh, but I definitely have seen like in the years that I've known you, how you have navigated through all of this facets of photography and you're still doing kind of the same goal is to let's shoot some cool pictures and like figure out a way to get paid for it so we can keep mm -hmm. doing it. Uh, but yeah, for me, that would be really hard. At the same time, I think I, ha I have had sort of a similar path when you look at it because mm -hmm. i have done so many things from i have done photography and i have done video and i shot a few weddings back when i was in college to make money and then i learned how to do some certain things doing that i never done like a lot of portraits but i know how to take a portrait and i enjoy them and i guess mixing that with being a location scout with being a producer and a director it's like you get to touch on all of these things and yeah maybe the the path can present itself i would just recommend that people still have some kind of north star mm -hmm. where as long as that thing is still present and just remember that that's what you want then push really hard to try out everything but always try to bring it up to that one thing because it takes so much energy to like set yourself apart even in that space and that's something that i really respect about you you are always posting and you and i have had this conversation before even when you're posting and posting and posting the instagram account is not growing or the website is not getting that many views uh, i know that you have you have your podcast and you have inspired me to like push on with my podcast and like we do it we drop it and then we pick it back up and we do it again so tell me a little bit about that uh tenacity because you're one of the people that every time I feel kind of lazy or like I, I'm not being consistent with my output then I open my Instagram and Will has another picture of another city and I'm like darn it <laughs> like why am, why am I not doing something like this consistent like he is well I don't know I feel like you're pretty consistent I feel like you pop in my feet a lot um but uh I was gonna say to to your other point about having a north star first uh I I agree with you. I think that you have to have a North Star. And I think ultimately for me, it was how to find a maintainable way to take photos that I want to take. That That's ultimately been my goal. And sometimes it was like, I wanted to be like, could I do wedding photography for a long time? Could I do, you know, uh, real estate? You know, so I, I had to kind of ask questions and be like, would I enjoy this type of photography? I don't know. So for me, it was like, I know I want to take photos all the time, just how could I do it and make money? And I think, uh, so I think I've ulti that's ultimately been my North Star and the reason I've tried so many things is because I, I liked a lot of different types of photography. I didn't know which one I needed to stick with the most, you know. Um, anyway, so to your other question uh, about uh, me supposedly looking like I work hard, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I think with the posting thing, um, I just feel like uh, I get kind of I, I'm one of those people that if I sit around too much, I kind of go crazy. And you, you could ask my wife about this. Like it, it like I can't even sit down just like on a Saturday. I can make it I can make it till lunchtime before I'm like, OK, I got to go do something, you know. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's more, I think for me, it's more of a, maybe even a soft addiction than (laughs) necessarily like a, (laughs) like a dry, like a drive of any kind. Um, but I also just love it. So it's not hard for me to find the energy. Some days, you know, I'm tired and I don't really know where to go take a photo or I don't really feel like it. But anytime I go out there and start taking photos, like I fall into just like I could be out there forever. So um, for I don't know. It just it's it's always been kind of easy for me just because I love it. Yeah, that's hilarious. Photography is my soft addiction. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, basically, that's pretty much what yeah. it looks like. But, but I, I definitely feel you because some, like, I tell my friends, uh, people close to me, like, I just get, like, my hands get itchy. Like, I, I want to grab the camera and shoot something. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's a little bit more difficult because I want to make films. And to make films, you need a script, you need actors, you need locations, you need a sound guy, you need camera, lenses, and then sometimes you need, like, food and things like that. So... And then you have to go into editing and then you could shoot for two days and then edit for two months. And then it takes another six months until you get another script and put everything together. So the projects are so far apart. And that's where photography for me, sometimes I would just go out on a weekend and just shoot some cars or some like mountains or something. And I get that little energy and it's like a little fix. And I I understand what you're saying. Like once you go out and you do that, it's like, it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could do it a little bit more often. And uh, I try, that's why I'm having these conversations and and trying to talk about all of these ideas so I can go out and like bring them into, into life. So in your case with this project that you're doing now with the city, I'm pretty sure that you have something like in the back of your head that is already like ideas that you're trying to put together. How do you balance a project that you started and is going with the desire to do something new that is even more fun now? Because at least for me, that early stages of making something is like the the best part and kind of like maintaining something long term is the annoying part. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I get excited when I make a finish like have a finished product and i think for you it's a lot more difficult because a lot more goes into like a short film or you know um just filmmaking in general you just it's a it's a collaborative thing and what i do is very much like i can do by myself and i can um with good light and a good scene like i can um you know come up with a good photo at any time really um And so for me, it, I mean, it also helps that I, you know, live centrally. So I, and I'm not afraid to drive anywhere, obviously. So, uh, I'll just get in my truck. Like yesterday, um, there was a spot that I've been wanting to photograph forever. This, this, uh, the oldest bridge in South Carolina. And it's like an nearly an hour and a half drive away, but I was just like, you know, I'm going to go today. That's going to be the photo today. So I just drove out there and went and, um, shot it. So, uh, I think, the I always love for me it's like when I get a photo that turns out well that like gives me the energy and gets me pumped about the next day but when I start having days where I feel like the work isn't as good as I want it to be that's when I start like that's when it starts pulling me down a little bit so um I usually I just uh moan to my wife about you know how I (laughs) wish that, you know, I feel like I'm a failure. I think I need to close up shop. It's over, you know? And then the next day I'll shoot this, like I'll do this amazing sunset or something like that. And I'll be like, I'll be like back. So it's a constant, like back and forth of like up and down. Yeah. I've I've talked to some other creative friends, uh, writers. I remember talking to a Sam Brooks, a writer friend of mine. And he was like, man, I feel like a failure. Like nothing that I write is good enough. And I'm like, are you insane? Like every time I read one of your scripts, I feel like a failure. Like I'm not doing anything with my life. And here's this like 20 something year old kid pumping out this like amazing scripts and like the drafts keep coming and coming and I can't keep up. And he was like, no, I feel like I'm not doing anything. And every time I see you, you're like with another project and like doing something else. So I don't know if it's like the nature of being in the arts or the creative things that we always feel less than 
we're always looking at this other person that is like way better or has more followers or has like the shots that we want to be taking. And then so far in my experience is pretty much everyone is also looking at other people and feeling kind of the same way. What do, yes. what do you think that is? Or how, how, do, how do you deal with that? I feel like, uh, I feel like I try, I, maybe I'm bad about it. See, you're somebody who's like really good at community and keeping up with people. And a lot of times for me, it's like I can fall so much into comparing myself on Instagram or wherever because there's so much good work out there, so many good people that a lot of the times like I I try to like post and ghost just to keep me off of like thinking about it too much. So I, yep. I try to for me, I, I tend to try to focus on the work um, and just keep up with like the friends that I care about um, and then. I don't know. I, 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 I'm just focused on trying to get better, and I try to just focus on that rather than what everybody else is doing. And maybe that's not super great for community all the time, but I think it's it's healthy in some ways. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, for me, I think it might seem like on Instagram, I'm always engaging and always with like with other people, but I'm actually not like, I usually do the same thing. I would post something in the morning or whenever I have a video or something to post, and then I'll try to leave. And a big thing that I did to help me with that also is like, I don't watch any stories. Yeah. I only watch stories from like two, three people tops that I want to keep up or like people that I'm working with that like the head of the studio that I work for, like I look at her stories to like know things that are happening and something that I can post to promote like the same thing that we're promoting. But I, but I try my best to do exactly what you're saying. Just post and get out of there. Because if you stay too long on Instagram, for, for me, it's a killer of happiness sometimes. At the same time, I try to use it as much as possible. So whenever I'm using the platform, like if I see one of your pictures, I try to comment. And then it, whenever I'm scrolling and seeing uh, content from people that I know, I try to leave compliments because I know how good it feels, you know, to mm -hmm. get a comment. Of, oh, I love that shot or like share that, that shot in my story or share a friend's like design on my story. So they feel like we are seeing their, their work. And I was talking to uh, another friend of mine and I was telling him, you know, like it might be a bad thing, but I do feel like I need recognition from my work. And sometimes it matters more than money to see how other people appreciate or like what you're doing. And I don't think it's either good or bad. I, I, I personally think it's part of the nature of being a creator and being an artist you need that validation from other people. Otherwise, you wouldn't make something and put it out there, you know? But yeah, I definitely and, agree with you. And to piggyback on that a little bit, like, I, I feel like for me, I have other forms of validation with a lot of my photos and because I sell them as prints. So I'll have photos that maybe didn't perform well on Instagram, but people are drawn to them when uh, to buy or to hang up in their office or something. And... And it's, that's probably even better. Yeah, it's if yeah, that's an amazing fit. In fact, maybe I, that's the drug I'm chasing this whole time. But um, you know, I think that uh, for me, I've kind of just like learned to just be okay with the fact that I don't really know which images people are going to be drawn to or not. Because sometimes I shoot a photo and I think this photo is amazing, and no one cares. But the photo I didn't really care that much about, that's the one that everyone's interested in. So you just, you yeah. kind of just have to like, let it go to some extent, you know? Yeah. Now let's get into one of my favorite things to argue passionately about. Let's talk about camera brands and lenses and gear and all that. I'm a gearhead. I'm obsessed. I want all the cameras. I love them all. I want to buy them all and like put them in my room and like stare at them in the morning when I wake up. Tell me about your favorite brands or like what you're excited about right now. And let's argue a little bit. Like I'm going to go against whatever you say just for the sake of argument because we need this channel to pop. Well, I'm easy to go against because I use a very uncool brand uh, called, uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, Nikon. Um, and Oof. No, yeah, it's uh, it's super uncool. But uh, I started I started with Nikon 
And so I have just always uh, just kind of gravitated towards it. And so I use a Nikon D850, though, which for making, like, prints and shooting high-res images is still, like, a super competitive... It's a DSLR, obviously, but it's a super competitive camera. It's, like, 45 megapixels. And this thing is, like, a, just a beast. And so I feel like... Uh, for like when you edit raw files and stuff, I feel kind of invincible with it in a weird way because it's just so powerful. Um, so I just like wow. it. But... You're, dro you're dropping some good quotes here. Like, I feel invincible. <laughs> wow. I know, you know, maybe, Nikon, maybe... Ni yeah, Nikon is like the sleeping giant. I think it's that camera brand that it's so powerful. And I guess if you're not in the world of Nikon, you kind of like brush it to the side, but the, there are some like amazing images that I've seen and the people that took them, they're like all Nikon through and through. Well, uh, Nikon, I, I would say that a lot of landscape photographers are use Nikon because of just the dynamic range, just the power of the raw files and the sensor and all that. And that it can use all the legacy lenses. Like I can stick any of my new Nikon lenses on like my film cameras over here um and, really yeah so it's just it's just got this amazing history it's got this amazing lens collection like it's just it, it's for and they're also like the the uh, beginner level ones are so affordable so that's how i started is because i was able to get a dslr for like i don't know it was like 250 300 bucks and yeah um but i will say I'm starting to cheat on Nikon a little bit now. With, Ooh, tell got, me more. Tell me more. <laughs> so I shoot. So this video that I'm recording with, I, I told you a second ago, I'm shooting on a Fuji film, and uh, just yeah, like Fuji. I I never sh shot anything on Fuji film, to be honest. It's it's I like it because it's small and it feels like a film camera. Um, but I I've got it because I wanted something more pocketable, and so they may I could shoot video on and. Whatever. So I've started taking photos with it. And I, I, I think I like it as like a, just like when I am just walking around on the street kind of camera, but I'm about mm -hmm. to probably get a Sony. Honestly, uh, my Nikon's yeah. getting up there, getting up there in years. So I'm, I'm probably going to cheat on it with Sony too. So yeah, Sony's pretty strong too, man. Uh, those Fujis, I to to be honest, I don't like that old film camera look because mm -hmm. to me it's like no, give me the future. Like I don't want an old thing. <laughs> You're a man of the future, yeah. Yeah, for me it's like give me the the like the next one that looks like a spaceship or something. <laughs> but every now and then you see those Fujis and they kind of look freaking cool, man. Like I gotta be honest, they do look cool. But then I'm not sure about their digital shops. Uh, but again, I need to shoot with it. I love Canon. I think the Canon colors have always gotten like my stamp of approval. I think because I grew up in an island and like I I come from like a vibrant culture, mm -hmm. the Canon colors is easier for me to like. I take a shot and I do a little bit of editing and it it pops and I feel like that's like what I want to see. But I've shot a lot with Sony. And Sony is an, an amazing camera system. The lenses, to me, I like the Canon lenses better. But also, I guess, it's what you get used to. I'm trying to push myself to try all of them and like all of them and just realize, hey, the more cameras we have, the better. But yeah. let me tell you, fighting about cameras is one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> because every time there is one that you know that that one is like killing the other one, like it is really fun to just like go along with that. And it is, it's cool for me to see people who are like fans of like their camp. I like that. I, I like mm -hmm. people that have passion and then that actually makes all of them kind of level up because mm -hmm. you know, like when, when Canon came out with video, that's where Nikon got pushed to the side a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then Sony was like, no, we're going to compete with that. And then Sony came out with like some ridiculous video specs on their mirrorless cameras. And then it took Canon a while to catch up to that. And now Canon has catching up to that. But now Sony is like racing the level again. And Nikon has some killer uh, mirrorless cameras like the yeah. C6 and the 7. I tried that camera with a friend of mine. That camera is a little monster. Like the mm -hmm. picture, it looks like even you put it on auto and the video is like killer and the the compact feel of it is great 
now maybe you need to send me that Fujifilm so I can try it out and, and tell you. Well, yeah. it's it's funny we're having this conversation and I keep having to stop because uh, my Fujifilm camera keeps overheating. So it's not like a ringing endorsement of Fujifilm, um, but I like but it. But they're for, pretty cameras. They're, yeah, they're pretty yeah, cameras. Yeah, they're pretty. Uh, I like uh, taking photos with it, and that's really why I got it. Um, and I use it for like some video stuff. Apparently, it can't handle long video stuff long video yeah um but yeah i was uh but basically like right now i'm kind of moving away from nikon so i'm i'm on the market right now so i'm 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 open to any camera brand at the moment um so i'm kind of i'm probably in the next couple months going to totally change my system because i use camera gear till it just is unworkable so like all my lenses which i tend to only use primes most of the time like everything's like pretty beat up so i'm i'm ready to move on and like get a whole new set of everything so i'm looking at sony um but yeah i I don't know so i I don't think i'm going to give you the fight you want because i'm kind of open to whatever (laughs) you're open to anything right now right now if you like all kinds of cameras and you're looking in the market is a nice place to be because everyone is coming out with so many like cool new cameras Canon has the new R3 that looks badass. They have the new 5 R5C that for video looks like a little beast. But then Sony has some awesome cameras. And your Nikon, like the, the new mirrorless, they're pretty solid too. I went with Canon because I want to get like a red Komodo and they use the RF lenses. I've always liked the autofocus on Canon better than Sony. Now, Sony is stepping up their autofocus game, but I already invested. So I have, like, the, the latest camera I got is one of these uh, EOS Rs, mm-hmm. and I like them a lot. And they're affordable when you think about the price. The lenses are really pricey, but then because I can put them on the, on the red Komodo, it makes sense, you know? So, go Canon. Well, I'm thinking, I think what I'm thinking about doing, because I've been using a Nikon when I want like to go hard. But like when I'm just like walking around, I like to take the Fuji film. So I'm kind of thinking like maybe I won't have just one main camera body anymore. And then I'll get like a bunch of different ones that I'll just kind of switch between a lot. Yeah. Just because that makes sense. Yeah. And with what I'm doing, it's like I'm trying to create print work. And sometimes I want like a different vibe depending on where I am or whatever. And so like maybe one. That's interesting. Canon colors would look great in one like in a coastal areas, right? And then Nikon looks good in mountain, you know. So I don't know. I, I'm yeah. I'm pretty like I kind of I kind of like them all, you know, to some extent. I'm I'm with you there, and then you can tell that to your wife, and then that allows you to buy more cameras because you can trick her and tell her, "Honey, like I I need, I cannot do this shot unless I have Canon plus like five lenses." And then you double up on Sony, like you're gonna be a king with cameras and lenses. Oh, I know, I know. It's, and and I like prime lenses too because I I like that extra bit of sharpness. But I will say, it I've gotten used to it now. But I wear out camera gear because I'm constantly switching lenses all the time. <laughs> so, so yeah, but I, I like I tw- feel you. I, I like a 24 millimeter lens. That's like my favorite. Like just. It's it's cool when you get close up to stuff. It's cool when you back up. Like I I just like the wider angle. It's it's fun. Yeah, for sure, man. So tell me, well, what are you like planning, and what are the things that if you could go out and do anything create creatively? So, will if you could go out creatively to do any project or anything that you could think of what would that big thing be that you would say, okay, I'm going to spend the next year like doing this. And even if it takes me like five years, this is why, this is what I want to like stand for and, and create. I mean, truth be told, like it's kind of what I'm doing right now. So, I mean, and I, I think of, you know, if, if I'm thinking about what I do in photography as a business, I think of my business as a series of projects. So just this era of my business is focused on like the small town photo project. Well, um, you know, maybe it's going to be a different uh, big project that I spend years on down the line. And I don't know quite what it is yet because I'm pretty deep into this one. But I would say creatively what I know I'm probably like 
want to go out and do like soon that I've been working towards is probably having a photo book. Um, and I, I have an idea for a series of photo books. Um, and, but I just need a lot of photos for it. So I'm just kind of probably in the next couple of years, I'll start moving toward what that looks like. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I like to think of what I do as um, seasons. So maybe for five years, I'm working heavily on the small town photo project and creating that into its own business. And then maybe I'm, you know, focused on some other different type of, you know, it, NFTs. I, you know, I don't know, like just it, it. So I'm I'm very much like I like to do a lot of stuff. And so this is just what I'm deep in right now and all I'm thinking about. So I don't know. I'm, I'm always open for something else to, to creep, creep up on me and, you know, get to grab my interest. That's really cool. Well, well, thank you so much, man, for being on the podcast and you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and send it to a friend who's a creative or a photographer and we'll see you guys on another episode.